Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Catherine Basu, and my guest today is Melissa Botello. Melissa Botello is a director at a medical technology company in San Diego, California. She is a mom, business leader, career coach, and women's heart educator. Melissa has more than 20 years of experience in sales, marketing, and customer experience. She's a heart disease survivor and graduate of the Women Heart Science and Leadership Symposium at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Women Heart is the nation's only volunteer program that trains women with heart disease to be community educators solely for women heart patients. Melissa is a Women Heart champion and shares her story and educates on the signs and symptoms of a heart attack, all in the mission of saving lives. Melissa is also a published author and launched a podcast in 2017. The goal for the Bizzle podcast is for Melissa to pay it forward and share her professional experience and expertise while integrating personal well-being tips into a meaningful experience for listeners. Welcome to the podcast, Melissa. I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm thrilled to be here. So I mentioned this in the in your bio that you are a heart disease survivor and that you are a women heart champion. Could you share a little bit more about your story and how you've become involved with, with women heart and been able to be a, an advocate for women and help educate them? Sure, absolutely. So uh, my story, my personal story started a couple years ago. I was uh, 48 at the time. Late at night, it was about 10 o'clock, just getting ready for bed. And I started feeling very fatigued, um, really tired more so than usual. But again, it was 10 o'clock. I work full time and I'm a single mom. So I just sort of chalked it up as another long work day. Mm -hmm. Um, But then as I started to get ready, I put my pajamas on, brush my teeth. I started having some pain in my jaw, really intense, like a burning pain. Um, And I felt a little short of breath. And, um, you know, I was talking to uh, my significant other and he said, you know, this doesn't sound right. You don't look good. Let's go to the ER. And I Mm. said, yeah, it's so late. I'm tired. My son was sleeping. I said, you know, if it persists, I'll think about it, but I'm okay. So I I really just, I didn't put all these signs together and I just brushed it off as overly tired, fatigued. Um, But the next day I just felt like I thought about it and thought, you know, that just wasn't normal. I had never really felt like that before. Uh, The pain, especially in my jaw and just the fatigue and I was short of breath a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. So I did go see my doctor who then referred me to a cardiologist Uh, because I have, I did, or I have a family history, um, but all my tests in the office were normal. I ended up long story short, seeing this cardiologist and um, all of those tests were normal, but he just felt like we needed another look at to see what was going on. Although he sort of, um, approached it as more of sort of check in the box. Like he didn't really think there was anything wrong and mm-hmm. doing it more to pacify me. And long story short, found out when I went into the um, operating room that two of my main arteries were more than 90% blocked. Mm-hmm. And I ended up having uh, two heart stents put in to keep those arteries open from closing again. So <sighs> that's sort of where my story began. And yeah. It took me a while. Yeah. It was a little overwhelming. Well, I can see, you know, you, you mentioned that you think it's, you know, really important that women need to advocate for their health because if you didn't have even, I mean, you said that that physician did kind of, you know, do that to help you check the box, but if you hadn't asked, maybe he would have kind of not, not gone and taken that step, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm positive of it because he really did, you know, went through, we did some um, non-invasive tests and they all came back normal. And I just sort of persisted and said, you know, something happened, something was different um, the way I felt that night. So I I definitely chalk a lot of it up to just sort of being persistent. And now um, I'm involved with, you mentioned this um, organization, it's called Women Heart. Mm -hmm. And um, after finding a doctor who would actually listen to me and hear what I had to say, um, she actually put me in touch with this organization because I said to her, I said, I don't 
I would hate for another woman to go through this and not know what the signs were, or if they didn't advocate for themselves, potentially wouldn't get the treatment that they would need to, um, to take care of themselves. So sure. yeah, it's Women's Heart Organization. They're a national coalition for women with heart disease, and they're the only um, patient-centered advocacy organization. So it's all about women and just trying to help educate them and empower them. And so that's what I've, um, that's sort of my sidekick. I have a full-time yeah. job, but I try, <laughs> I try to spread the word whenever possible. Well, that's good. Like, like you mentioned, your bio, just being able to, to pay it forward and help help others, right? So yeah, absolutely. Because there's so many women. I mean, if you ask women, including myself prior to this, you know, what's the most, what disease are you most afraid of or think that, you know, is most pertinent to women? And most people will say breast cancer. Right. Which, yeah, which breast cancer is really prevalent, but more women die of heart attacks than breast cancer. It's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think, is that because the the lack of knowledge maybe and not knowing the signs and Perhaps. For sure. I think that that's part of it. De- definitely not knowing the signs, dismissing what you're feeling. And then even um, with healthcare providers, it's something that, um, you know, they're very aware of what a heart attack looks like in a man. But if you're, you know, if you're under a certain age and you're a woman, they just don't associate it as a potentially a woman having a heart attack. Sure. So I guess maybe the first step is, asking your doctor if you're at risk, right? What, what are some of the questions, you know, or what are some of the risk factors that might, might be something to think about whether we've talked to our doctor or not? Right. Absolutely. Um, for sure. Knowing the risk factors. So uh, a couple of them, um, high blood pressure, that's mm-hmm. a risk factor. Um, diabetes can be also a contributor to women's heart disease. Um, cholesterol, obviously. I, unfortunately, I didn't have, or I don't have high blood pressure or diabetes. My cholesterol was in the normal range, but on the higher side, but it was not. Um, okay. But I did and do have family history. So both my parents have heart disease. So that alone, having the family history, even though I didn't or don't have any of the risks like diabetes or high blood pressure. <laughs> Hi friends, it's Catherine, and that sound is your Happy Point reminder. If you're joining us and going for an out and back walk and just have 15 minutes, you'll want to turn around now. All right, back to Melissa. Was enough to put me uh, at risk. And so I think those are the questions to ask. Um, and if, you, if any of your listeners want to go to the Women Heart website, they have a long list of, of the uh, risk factors. But I would say, again, talk to your doctor. And even if you don't fall into those groups, if you have family history, that's very significant. As mm-hmm. well. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then what are, what are some of the signs of a women's heart attack versus a men's, which we might think about more? <laughs> Right. Well, men, and we see them on TV a lot, or you'll see a man clutching his chest and fall to the ground. Well, sure. That's, that's, that's more typical of a man. Number one, and number two, that's more of a cardiac arrest mm. where um, your heart completely stops. However, uh, for women and heart attack signs, sometimes um, you you could, could have any or all of these together. And I think that's where I didn't put them all together. Um, Mm. Fatigue is a big sign. Sweating. Uh, That night I did feel clammy and sweaty. However, I'm, you know, was in my late forties and already, I think starting pre-menopause. So um, sweating, I didn't really associate it as anything other than maybe that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shortness of breath, nausea. Those are symptoms in women's heart attacks. And then pain, it's not typical for women in the chest, but it's either in their arms, their Mm -hmm. neck or jaw, and even in their back. So, and if you put them all together, that could be, you know, if you just had sweating or if you just had a um, nausea, you know, again, it might not be, but if you're putting them all the signs together and really being aware and listening to your body, which I didn't. Um, and I know more now, right? I, I, sure. I didn't know as much, even though it was in my family, I thought there's no way this was going to happen to me. I'm in my forties. I'm pretty healthy. I, you know, I could lose a few pounds, but I walk regularly. I don't smoke. Oh, that was mm-hmm. another risk factor. Is smoking. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't smoke. So I just, you know, chalked it up to tired, fatigued. 
Yeah, and I think I think yeah. most women do, right? So it's it's good just having that that awareness of what the risk factors are and like you mentioned being being a little bit more observant, especially if you have the the family history, like even if if you are, you know, healthy and maybe don't have some of those other risk factors that your family history can play a big role and then and then knowing the signs. Yeah, absolutely. There was a study, I think it was in 2015, a study of women who had had a heart attack before the age of 55. And the study showed that most women dismissed their signs or they had trouble recognizing the signs and they didn't want to look dramatic or, um, you know, cause their family and friends any troubles. So they just, you know, sort of ignored it. And Mm -hmm. unfortunately, that's why so many people don't make it. Yeah. Well, I definitely appreciate you sharing, you know, these nice quick tips with us to get us thinking about it because I think awareness is is huge, right? The fact that we could be at risk without maybe realizing it before. And then if we do have some of these symptoms, you know, paying attention to them and and probably sharing them with our family is important too, right? Because I think that it's not just women that don't realize these signs and symptoms, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I've spoken to other women. And, and again, it's not just about, like you said, empowering and, and educating women, but we all have brothers, fathers, significant others. You know, we the men need to know what these signs are and symptoms as well so they can when and if they happen that they can recognize them in their in their loved ones. So, yeah, just bringing more awareness to it is, is the best thing we can do, knowing the signs and symptoms and then talking with our doctors and really taking the time. I know we go into a doctor's office and they typically will lead the conversation, but it's up to us to advocate for ourselves and really talk about what's happening and, and um, seek out the appropriate diagnosis. Cause that's another thing that happens with women is um, not getting the accurate diagnosis. For me, when I did talk to that cardiologist, when I told him about the jaw pain, he asked me if it was a toothache and I okay. told him I was, 100 percent positive it's not a toothache i've had one before that was not too toothache um and then when i went on to tell him a little bit more that i felt fatigued and uh he said well you know could it be depression are you having anxiety and oh, I said, well, again i've had those too i know what those look like but that right. wasn't this so you know it really you know if if i wasn't adamant i think i could have walked out of that office just going wow this doctor didn't really give me any credit for what i was saying um so I think, you know, you, people know their own body. No one else knows it like you do, your own body. So listen to what your body's telling you and then talk to someone. If you don't get the answers that you think are right, find someone right. else. Right. And I mean, that's because I feel like, well, it's surprising that a cardiologist would, would have, you know, those rea- those reactions and not be thinking about heart attack being a, a thing that could be going on. But I feel, you know, if, if I was the patient in that situation and, and being asked about these other things, I feel like the toothache, like you said, if I, if I've experienced that and know, okay, that's one thing, but then, you know, the depression part, you, you might feel guilty. Um, yeah. you know, so that's interesting that, you know, you, you, even pushing it forward. I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> so you really absolutely. have to, you do, you absolutely do. And, and to that point, it's not just, uh, you know, men, healthcare providers. So when I was going into the operating room, these two nurses wheeled me in and they were probably in their forties about my age. And again, they work in this cardiac uh, cath lab and they're like, wow, you look young. What are you here for? I said, well, you know, I had these symptoms and one of them said, jaw pain. Really? I haven't heard of that. And I thought, oh my gosh, you work here. I have right. not heard of this. No, that's, uh, and, that's you scary. Know, now, it is scary. So I think we we think that our healthcare providers know all and, you know, with giving them credit, they're, they're just doing their best, but they're just right. not informed enough about women's, specifically women's symptoms. And, you know, really, um, it's unfortunate, but if, if we speak up and try to advocate, we're one step better than we could be. Sure. And maybe, you know, maybe giving them some credit, it's probably the percentages, you know, are probably skewed towards people who, you know, aren't as young or, you know, aren't healthy, you know, and so it might be, that's what they see, you know, more regularly, but also probably because it's not being screened very well too, right? So I guess it goes both ways. Absolutely. And and a lot of the testing and the drugs and the clinical trials are done a lot on men and not women. So it's just that there's not enough, um, focus on women and, and 
specifically heart disease for women. So hopefully through the Women's Heart Organization, I know that they've got a lot of things working with um, advocating for patients and working with healthcare providers, working on policy changes. So hopefully over time, this will improve. But in the meantime, that's why I hope to spread more of this awareness. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I really enjoyed having you share just this, you know, cursory, like, you know, getting to know more about Women Heart and, you know, being able to learn about the signs of a heart attack and things that we should be aware of. Where else can people connect with you, Melissa, just to keep up to date with you? Because I know in addition to your work with Women Heart, you're also, you have a podcast that tries to integrate the importance of wellness, which I'm sure my listeners would want to check out as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yep. So we, you can find me at uh, iswellpodcast.com. I've got that. It's on iTunes or at uh, www.mbiswell.com. Awesome. I appreciate you having me on today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks so much, Melissa. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time.